this is going to be a mini review of the Ego Power Station. So this is a inverter. It basically will take an Ego battery or four and the 56 volts DC from this it'll output to 120 volt AC and of course it also has a little USB charger on it. Now this is a portable power station. Um, it is in the Ego brand line and if you're not already all in on the Ego tools this is probably not the product for you. Um, you can buy a portable power station that's self-contained with batteries built in, um, cheaper for more capacity, um, and has some nicer features than this guy. Now where this really shines is if you have a lot of batteries. So I had about eight Ego batteries, at least four of them were the big 7.5 amp hour batteries, and if you have a lot of the batteries, it makes sense to get one of these to use them for other things besides your lawn tools. So let's go through the simple bits here. Um, any tool, any Ego tool works with any Ego battery. So that means you can take the tiny little 2.5 amp hour battery that's used for leaf blowers and stuff, plug that sucker in here, it will turn on. So it does limit the power, however. So this guy is a 2,000 watt inverter. It'll peak at 3,000 watts for a couple of seconds to start up things. But with a 2.5 amp hour battery in here, you can see, hey, battery number two is installed. And it's fully charged because it has all five little bars on it. But it's limited to 600 watts. So the AC down here, you're limited to 600 watts with that little battery. Now, if you plug in a 5 amp hour battery on the other side, it takes just a second or two and the device says, hey, I have two batteries now, and it lights up the other battery. Um, and then it says, hey, I can do 2,000 watts now because you have these two batteries. So if you only had the 2.5 battery, or if you only had the 5 amp hour battery, you're at 1,200 watts. So you need either two batteries that at least one of them is a 5 amp hour to get up to the 12,000 watt. Um, you know, so you need a couple of batteries to make this thing go at full capacity. And even so, little 2 amp hour batteries aren't going to last too, super long on it. So generally, you're going to be using this with 5 amp hour or 7.5 amp hour batteries. And the big advantage here is you can plug four of these in, and as you've seen, I can plug them in, I can take them out, as long as there's at least one battery on here, it'll keep running things at 600 watts if it's a small battery. Now if it's a big, one of these um, 7.5 amp hour batteries, one 7.5 amp hour battery will run it at full power. So, you know, kind of for full power, minimal usage is one 7.5 amp hour battery. That's not going to run things at 2000 watts for a long time, but it will run things. So, it has USB charging here. It's pretty generic. It has, you know, 2.4 amps per outlet. So you have four outlets at 2.4 amps. That's basically a 12 watt charger. It will definitely charge your devices. Now you do have to push the USB button to turn it on. When you push that button, it starts charging. The little USB light lights up. This light's here to tell you it's on. And now it goes. Now, it also has an hour and minute counter. So right now, with this giant battery, I can charge my phone for 50 hours, is what its prediction is. Um, you know, so this is not really economical for, um, you know, as a phone charger. You know, that's not really where it shines. But you can charge all your USB devices while you're using it. Now, the real power is coming out of these outlets here, and you have a standard household outlet, and it will run anything that would run on a standard household outlet like that. You know, so anything that plug into a 15 amp circuit is going to run with this guy here, with at least a decently sized battery so you get the 2000 watt power. Um, it's pure sine wave, so the power here is at least as good as that comes from the grid. Um, you know, so I have no, no complaints about the power on this guy. Now do not buy its little brother. Um, this is the 150 watt Ego Nexus Escape. This is a um, not a pure sine wave. It's not even a modified sine wave. This guy is a square wave power supply. Um, so it might be useful for USB charging. Um, and it's useful for things like hot glue guns and soldering irons or a laptop adapter that doesn't care that it's, you know, a square wave. Um, but don't buy this little, little guy here. They're coming out with a new one that is 400 watts, it's pure, it's, um, pure sine wave, and it has USB power delivery. So if you're really looking for something to run a laptop 
or something that needs USB power delivery off of a little battery like this, wait for their 400 watt version, it's pure sine wave and it has USB power delivery and you can charge a battery with USB power delivery. So I'm looking forward to that guy, but don't go for the 150 watt Nexus Escape. So as an inverter, this guy runs things great. Ninja Blender, 1800 watt microwave, full size fridge, it runs it all. It may not run everything all at the same time. So if you have your toaster oven, and the microwave and the blender plugged in, it might reset and say, hey, that's too much power all at once. Um, but for reasonable loads, this guy's gonna run just about anything you wanna run off of it. Now, how long it runs it depends on how much power you're drawing. So to give you an idea, I have four of these 7.5 amp hour batteries, and a couple of them are okay. Um, you know, they're a couple years old, but they're 300 watt hour capacity. A couple of them are new. And I ran my home fridge on this thing for about 14 hours. So this is not going to get you through a three or five or seven day power outage with a hurricane without some way to charge these batteries. But it will run your fridge continuously for overnight for me. Um, and if you, you know, ran your fridge maybe a couple hours every six hours, it would probably get you through a day or two days to keep your fridge running. You know, so it's good for small temporary power outages, but you need a way to recharge these batteries or you need a lot of these batteries if you want this to go for multiple days. Now, speaking of charging batteries, this guy here acts as a battery charger and it includes the power brick on top, so it's you know, nicely attached there. And it includes the cables down in this little compartment. And I was like, well, all right, they have a cable compartment, that's kind of nice. Um, however, I never plan on using this as a battery charger, so you know, I'm just not gonna use this. It has this weird plug in here that has the two power leads and then four little wires. Um, and basically, this guy here is like 170 watts. So this is a slow charger. If you plug it in, it will not work as an inverter. It does nothing but charging. So you can't use it as an uninterruptible power supply or a backup power supply like that. Um, if you plug it in, it will charge your four batteries, but it does it slowly. As a matter of fact, this is not slower. So I'm not just saying it's, it's a slow charger. Ego has their fast charger, their rapid charger, that is like 500 watts. And then they have their regular slow chargers, which are like 200, 250 watts. This guy here is about 170 watts. So it actually charges these batteries slower than if you put them on the regular Ego slow charger. Um, and it's charging them one at a time, and it does a kind of a round robin thing, so it tries to keep them all about the same level. So when I ran my fridge on this guy, I had four of these 7.5 amp hour batteries on it. It ran my fridge for about 14 hours. And then I plugged it into charge, and it took about 14 hours to recharge those batteries as well. Um, so if I take one of these batteries, I put it in a fast charger, it's done in an hour, maybe an hour and you know, 20 minutes. Um, I have two fast chargers, so I can charge these a lot faster than are in this guy. So it's kind of a useful feature if you need a place to store your batteries, you want them to be charged when you come back to them. You know, so it's, it's nice that they include that but I don't really plan on using the charging feature of this, especially because it doesn't pass through power. So you cannot run the inverter or the USB charger while it's charging. As soon as you plug it in, it goes into charging mode. That's the only thing it does. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I say there are a lot of other power banks you can buy that have a lot of nicer features. And one of them is that a lot of power banks you can buy will charge at a much faster rate. They'll charge at 10 amps, for example. You're getting you know, 1,000 watts in all at once to charge, so it recharges a lot faster than this guy. And a lot of them will do a UPS, where you can charge while you're using it. So you can have a CPAP machine or a 3D printer or a computer running off of it. If the power goes out, the batteries will take over. When the power comes back, it recharges the batteries. Um, you know, so there's a lot of features like that that this guy doesn't have. It is essentially kind of a portable generator replacement and it counts on you having a lot of batteries to keep it powered and you probably are going to want to charge those batteries using some regular Ego charger. Because presumably if you have all these batteries um, you probably have some other Ego chargers as well. Now weight wise this guy's 31 pounds you know, you lift this up here, it's 31 pounds with the wires and this stuff attached, so, you know, maybe 28, 29 pounds without it. You know, it's hefty, but not too hard to lift. It is made out of plastic and aluminum. It's mostly plastic, but it's a pretty tough, sturdy plastic. 
there's lots of little things in here. I could see on a garage floor a lot of bugs, um, you know, living in this and, and kind of getting spider webs and everywhere. Um, you know, it's a pretty heavy duty plastic. It has some aluminum posts. Um, I'm not too worried about getting damaged. It's pretty hefty. But keep in mind, this thing's 30 pounds by itself. Each of these batteries adds another six and a half pounds. So, you know, you're adding 12 pounds on the front and 12 pounds on the back, and you're up to some 50 some pounds here. Um, now you can't take the batteries off, so you can carry the, you know, carry the converter and then carry the batteries and not have to lift the whole thing all at once. Um, and it does have nice handles, so it's certainly possible to lift. Um, but, you know, that's the size it is. Now they say clean, quiet power. It is clean. If you're drawing a small amount of power, it is quiet, but if you run something like a 1000 watt Ninja Blender, 1800 watt microwave, fans will turn on, and they're pretty noisy. Um, I've heard a lot of power banks that are quieter than this guy. You know, the fans turn on, and, and you know they've turned on. It draws a lot of air in the front, shoots it out the back, it keeps it cool. It's, you know, solid equipment, it's going to run well. But do keep in mind that if you're drawing a lot of power, it will make some noise. It's not as bad as a generator, of course, but it does make some noise. So, my general summary here is solid inverter, has USB charging, um, it will use these batteries up and power things, so I have no complaints about its operation as an inverter. The charging is really slow. Now, the one thing it does have, they just started, they just released, is they have a brick you can buy that's a solar charger brick. So you hook it up to 100, 200 watts of solar panels and it will charge off a solar panel. So that's about the only advantage of having this guy is they have a solar kit to charge things. Now if I were doing this, I'd probably rig up a couple of panels and an inverter to charge these batteries off of one of the regular you know, one of the regular um, chargers to charge them a little faster. But it does have a solar option. It's not the best solar inverter or solar generator out there. Um, if you don't have a lot of Ego batteries already, you probably want to buy a different brand. But if you have a snowblower or a lawnmower and you've bought a lot of these batteries for it, um, you know, being able to use them in a power outage or camping type situation is very nice. It has some smart features. Um, you can attach it to your phone via Bluetooth, and it will tell you on the phone app, hey, here's the four batteries attached and what their you know, percentage power is right now. Um, you can also turn on and off these things here with the app. So you can have a button that says, hey, I want to turn on the USB, and now the USB is on. You can say, hey, I want to turn on and off these outlets. And on the app, it actually lets you turn off each of the three outlets separately. So I can control each of those three outlets from this app. You know, I can turn them off and on one at a time. And that could potentially be useful if you're in a tent and you want to turn things on and off from outside or whatever. Um, that's Bluetooth. It does have a Wi-Fi connection. So supposedly you could attach this to Wi-Fi and then the app would run from anywhere in the world that had internet access. I was not able to get it detached to my Wi-Fi. And also, if you're using this, it's more of a power out type situation. So unless you're plugging your Wi-Fi router and DSL modem into this to power it, you're probably not going to have Wi-Fi anyways in that situation. So I think the Bluetooth connection is a little nicer. It's nice because it tells you how many watts you're using instead of just you know a display that kind of is a bar graph that goes up. It'll actually give you a number of the number of watts. So the app is a benefit, but it's nothing special. Um, so. That's my mini review. I'm going to do a little efficiency analysis at the end of this video um, because my impression is that there's a lot of efficiency losses through the inverter. So, you know, one of these batteries might have 340 watt hours of power in it, but I suspect you're probably only going to get 250 watt hours out of the AC side of things. So, let's go do a little test on that and I'll wrap it up.